What's going on, guys? It's Jack Yellow Satan 75 here, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, Amy Gallagher from Hibs Women. This is the long awaited interview with Amy Gallagher. We've been trying to get this one arranged for quite a few weeks now, so thank you for joining me, Amy. No bother, thanks for having me. So, I've just got a few questions about your career and your time at Hibs, um, so I'll just jump right into it. And my first question is Sunday March your 100th appearance for Hibs. How did you feel reaching such a major milestone at the club? Yeah, I was quite surprised to be honest. Um, I never realised I played that amount of games. Uh, obviously, I've been here three, four years now, so uh, yeah, I've racked up quite a lot of games. So yeah, it was a good feeling to get my hundredth appearance. Yeah, big, big, big milestone. So my second question for you is: You joined Hibs from Forfar Farmington. You had an impressive individual season with Forfar, despite the club being relegated. Did you feel any pressure coming into the big move to Hibs and? How did you feel having such a good season despite the fact the club got relegated? Um, yeah, it was a good season individually with Farfar before I moved. Um, obviously, we did get relegated, but I was playing well. Um, I was scoring, I scored a few goals and Chris Roberts was the one that signed me. Um, it was kind of a no-brainer to go to Hibs, to be honest. Um, but when I went, I didn't feel any pressure. No, there was the calibre of players there, like Lucy Graham, Lucy Robertson, Lizzie Arnott. Um, so I knew going there I was going to improve so yeah Chris Roberts gave me a lot of confidence just to go there and be confident um, so yeah it was a no-brainer and it turned out to be a good move in the end. So it was definitely a move that you felt would benefit you in terms of your development and everything like that? Yeah definitely I've improved a lot as a player as a person in the last four years so yeah no regrets. What were the sort of feelings um, when you got the offer for such a big club you know Hibs are massive not just within women's football in Scotland, but within Scottish football in general. Yeah, I was. I had quite a few clubs wanting me, but I know, Hibs was the one I wanted to go to. Um, well, obviously, a lot of players uh, go down to England after playing for Hibs, um, and I had a, a lot of young players coming through. Um, so yeah, it was a no-brainer. And, and Chris Roberts was a manager I really wanted to work for as well. So yeah. Brilliant. So next question is: What were your feelings when you made your Hibs debut? Yeah, I remember, I remember I made my debut in a friendly, but I made my debut against Aberdeen and I scored, actually. Um, I was I remember being dead nervous, obviously, cause, but the players you're playing with, they make it dead easy for you to play football. You're playing with better players. So, um, yeah, I was, I was nervous, but really excited as well. Of course, Aberdeen, not a bad side at all to um, make your debut against a, a, quite a decent team. So it must have been... All the feelings must have been there in your debut, especially against a big club like Aberdeen. Yeah, Aberdeen were good back then. Um, I think it was 2017. Um, I, th- I just came on and I, as soon as I got my, my first touch, my first goal, I felt better. Um, I was obviously quite young then, but there was a, a lot of young players in the team at the time. Um, so, yeah, I just felt comfortable and, yeah, good to get going. Um, you've sco- my next question for you is you've scored quite a few goals um, for Hibs in your time with us. What, what is your favourite um, goal you've scored for Hibs? My favourite's the Champions League goal. Um, obviously, we were getting beat at the time, um, so it didn't really mean anything, but it was the Champions League goal, you know, away from home on a big stage, so I don't think you could beat that, really. And definitely, every player dreams of. And I'd say, in terms of um, my favourite goal that you've scored, I'd say the free kick at K Park against Celtic. Mm-hmm. I see that was a good goal. It was just a shame the result in that game, but it was a good goal. So my next question is, you've won your fair share of silverware um, at Hibs. What trophy win was your favourite and why? Um, it's a hard question. Probably the 9-0 one against Celtic um, because I started that game. Um, I think it was a League Cup. Um, I started that game and I managed to get, I think I got a few assists. Um, so just individually, I thought I played well. And just the fact that we won 9-0, um, we were all over them and... I think just the full team performance, we really deserved it. So yeah, it's probably my favourite. Yeah, no, that was a good, um, it was a good campaign that one. And sort of to add on to the end of that, do you hope that at some point you can maybe get a um, another cup winners medal, um, at Hibs or even a league winners medal at some point? Yeah, I don't think you can rule that out. Obviously, us as a club, we're going through quite a transitional period. So um, I think with the players that we've got at the club, you know, we can win trophies with the squad. Um, I think we've just had a bit of an up and down season, not being able to do it. But I think next season, maybe the coming season, we can definitely do it again. Yeah. Yeah. So the next question is, we've touched on it before, but how did it feel 
um, playing Champions League football and then scoring that amazing goal under the floodlights in Prague. That must have been um, so many great feelings. Obviously, Champions League football is huge for any player. So to play Champions League football and score in an away leg in a um, big city like Prague, obviously Slavia, a big club, that must have been amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Obviously, the scoreline wasn't good, but um, obviously got to play Easter Road before and then um, and then going down to Prague. So I think the whole team were just buzzing off it. Like, I know we didn't make it through, but we managed to get through the group stages um, first and then play Prague. So it was just all the team were buzzing and I think it's a moment nobody will forget. Yeah, absolutely. And do you hope we can play European football again sometime soon? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, there's a chance for two teams in Scotland to do it this season. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't us, but I think in the coming seasons, as I said before, we can definitely still aim to do that. Definitely. So, as and you know, talking more about European football, if we were to play European football again, would you hope for a big glamour tie against somebody like Wolfsburg or Bayern Munich or Lyon, or would you hope for somebody easy, um, maybe one of these teams in Iceland or something like that? Um. I'm not sure. I remember before I signed for Hibs, I went and seen Hibs play Bayern Munich. Uh, and the amount of fans there, like Easter Road is packed. So I think I'd like to play uh, a big team like that at Easter Road. I think that'd be good for the whole club. So the next question for you is, who is the best player you've played against, in your own opinion, at your time at Hibs? Um, probably in Scotland, I'd probably say Lisa Robertson. Um, I think she was just really hard to play against, even when I trained with her when I first signed for Hibs. She's just so hard to get the ball off of. Um, but when I, mean, I played for Scotland 19s, I played France a few times. I'm not yeah. sure of their names, but just the French players were unreal. Yeah, and a lot of them have sort of made it into the senior French squad now that obviously did well at the last World Cup. Uh, Lisa Robertson's a fantastic player. She's been great this season as well. Um, so, next question is this is sort of a two parter. Who's your favourite teammate right now at Hibs? And if you could bring any of your former teammates back, who would you bring back? <laughs> um, favourite teammate now? Um, I probably have a couple. I probably I like I enjoy playing with Shiv, Siobhan Hunter. Um, obviously she plays centre half, but she just plays you the ball. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. a range of passing. You know she's going to find you if you make a run. Um. And also Cav, I think me and Cav have a good understanding of each other's game um, and she's a good aggressive player to play with. So probably just now I'd say those two. Yeah. Uh, and pass player, um, maybe Lizzie Arnott. I used to look up to Lizzie when I played for Forfar and just looking at her through the Scotland youth squads. Um, and she's another one, a great player to play with. Um, dead easy to play with and find her. And she, you know she's going to find you. So yeah, I'd probably say her. Some good choice that you said the right answer with Shiv because she mentioned you and asked her who oh, she did she? <laughs> So, yeah, my last interview. So, you've obviously represented Scotland at uh, um, youth level. Um, do you hope that you can follow in Leah Eddy's footsteps? Obviously, Leah got minutes against Northern Ireland last night. Do you hope that you can follow in Leah's footsteps and start to break into the senior Scotland squad? I know that there's a new manager coming in and there's new times at the Scotland national team. So do you hope that you can get noticed and get that um, senior cap and play with Scotland at a senior level? Yeah, definitely. I think it's everyone's dream to go and play for the first team. Um, a lot of people have played for the youth squads and are, are quite close to getting into the first team. And it's good that a lot of players playing in the Scottish game are there. Um, so yeah, I was buzzing for Leah. It just shows you like if you're consistent through the whole season, then you'll get noticed. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can do that in the future. So definitely Scotland. And do you hope you can play at a major tournament with Scotland? Obviously I missed out on the Euros, unfortunately, um, this time round. But we've got World Cup qualifiers coming up soon. So do you hope that you can um, play at a major tournament with Scotland? Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, obviously it's a big thing for the whole nation to play at a, a big tournament. Um, I did it at Scotland 19s when we made the Euro finals and it was amazing. So yeah, going that one step further and, and uh, playing for Scotland at a Euro finals would be amazing. So next question, I'm sure this is the one that everybody will want to know, is you became a bit of a fan favourite this season as you bagged yourself an Edinburgh Derby hat-trick in the 6-0 demolition of Hearts at Ainsley Park. What were the feelings on that day? Obviously, it was an excellent team performance, um, not just like those excellent individual performance, but the team played well. So how did that feel as an um, individual getting a hat-trick? And obviously, for the team, you'll get such a good goal over the city rival. 
Yeah, it was amazing. Um, obviously, the Hibs fans on the team, the Edinburgh Derby is a big derby. Um, I think as a whole team that day, we're just we were playing free flowing football. We we're playing great football and uh, we played, scored a lot of goals. We Kirsty Morrison laid on <laughs> behalf of them, I think. Um, so yeah, I was delighted to get three goals uh, and the whole team scored a lot of goals. So it was uh, good for the confidence for the whole team. It was a great. That was a great day. That was a great day. Only one goal off the famous scoreline, but yeah, I heard that after. Yeah, seven. Yeah, nine. so that must that must have been great to have such a um, great team performance. Obviously, and doing well in an Edinburgh derby is um, always a great feeling, like you were saying. So, um, do you enjoy Edinburgh derbies? Obviously, I'm working off the knowledge that you're a Dundee United fan, so do you enjoy going in Edinburgh derbies, or is it like well? Um, what are your sort of feelings when you go into Edinburgh derbies? No, I think I do enjoy it. Every every derby is a big derby, no matter like who you support and who you're playing for. Um, obviously, it's big for the club, and you're pay- playing for the club, so you know how big it is going into the game. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you ever hope that um, Dundee ever make it into the women's uh, into the SWPL so you can score a few against them? Yeah, that'd be good. I think my dad would enjoy that. <laughs> I think I. So my next question is this sort of feeds in is the name Gallagher will be very familiar to Dundee United fans of a certain vintage and the um, Blackburn Rovers fans as well. Given that you come from such a big football and family, does that inspire you to perform um, or does it like put any pressure on obviously completely different players and completely different positions, everything like that? But do you feel the pressure to perform because of your family name or does it actually like um, inspire you? Because like I was saying, a lot of um, Dundee United fans and Blackburn Rovers fans and that will ken the name Gallagher pretty well. No, it doesn't put any pressure on me. I do get asked that quite a lot. Um, but no, I, I'm just, I think it's something to be proud of. Um, obviously, that my dad's side of the family, there's a, there was a lot of footballers, um, so you could say it's in the genes. But no, I don't ever feel any pressure. I, I play football for myself and because I enjoy playing it, um, I would still play it if that, there was no footballers. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely proud of it and uh, hopefully I can keep it going. That's brilliant. Yeah, so who would you say your inspirations are when you're playing football um, in terms of like, you know, who inspires you to play football um, on a, um, when the games and that? Probably just, I don't really, I wouldn't say any players, I'd probably just say my family, to be honest. Um, my dad comes to all my games, my mum and dad are really supportive um, and I love making them proud, so I'd probably just play play for them, really. So my next question is, um, we've maybe touched on this before, like goals and that, but what's been your like best personal moment in a hip shot um, in your career um, so far? Um, obviously that you can obviously goals are a big thing, um, Champions League goal, but I think the final against Glasgow City last, well, 2019, sorry, um, I scored two goals and. Uh, that whole game was probably my favourite game apart from the final five minutes, mm. the final result. Um, so that was probably my favourite moment as a whole was that game. And it was just unfortunate the way it ended. It's a bit weird me saying it's my favourite favourite game, but just individually, um, yeah. obviously it didn't end well. But I think if you think about it before that, that goal, then that was my favourite moment. Yeah, I was there at Tynecastle and it was a, we played excellently and we um, I think the result was quite slightly cruel on us, but you can't deny Glasgow that last goal. You know, it was a great goal. I know, it was a peach. <laughs> yeah, so what were your what were the feelings of the team after that? It must have been like, well, we played well but we still lost. It must have been quite difficult after the game, but there was still positives to pick out. Obviously lost a cup final but still put in a really good performance against the top team in the country. Yeah, everyone was gutted. Um Obviously, we lost the league again. And I thought going in, we well, thought we were going in at extra time. And I thought, because I came off just before, and I thought we were going in at extra time and we were going to win it. I just had that feeling. And then Claire Shine pops up with a good goal at the end. So, well, we're all gutted. Um, that was a, it was a bad end. To, well, it was a good season, um, but it was still a bad end to it. And we were all gutted. And then we never played football again for a few a few months after that. Um, so we just had to pick ourselves back up, really, and we've kind of forgot about it now. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, the games against Glasgow are always really tight in the league and everything like that. So going into the games against Glasgow, do you feel extra motivated in games against Glasgow to perform? Because obviously, they're our big rivals, I'd say. It's a bit like El Clasico was in Glasgow um, all the time with the sort of history behind it and everything like that. So do you feel you need to perform in a game against Glasgow? Do you just treat it like any other game? Um, obviously, you've got to have the same mentality every game, but I think the games against Glasgow City, you know, 
especially when we were going for the league, you know you've got to perform um, to win against them. And unfortunately, we never, like, we always got pipped at the post for the league. Um, but I think this season, there was more big games, like Glasgow City, Rangers, Celtic. You've always got to be at, at the top of your game. Um, and again, I don't think we'll, we'll play badly against them. Um, we've just not got the results, but hopefully next season we can turn that around. Yeah, absolutely. So, next question for you is, how do you feel women's football has progressed in Scotland in your time at Hibs? Obviously, the women's game's continuously growing here. Sides like Rangers and Celtic have really started investing. We've seen um, Aberdeen and Dundee United and St Johnston invest in women's football quite heavily as well now. So, do you feel the women's game's growing in Scotland in your time? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Even since when I sang for Hibs that first season, there was only us in Glasgow City really, and it's been like that for a couple of seasons. And now teams are investing, and clubs are investing, and it's only making the league better. Um, I know it's tough for us for Hibs because we're going through a, quite a transitional period, but teams going full time and money involved, it can only make the club better, uh, the league better. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, I think the only way is up really. And do you? sort of feel happy when you see or like, proud to be Scottish and that when you see how well young players are doing from Scotland and how well Scottish players are doing in general obviously we've got some good young Scottish players like Hayley Adams at Hibs and then you know down south you've got players like Claire Emsley and everything like that that are doing really well um, so how does that make you feel like really happy to be a Scottish player and coming, coming through the system like that? Yeah definitely I think young players coming through now have got I've got a lot more resources and training. You've got the academy, you've got the performance skills and stuff like that. So I think girls have got a lot more opportunities now. Um, and there's a lot of young ones coming through at Hibs who've got uh, a lot of ambition and stuff. So, yeah, I think for Hibs, the, like, their aim is to produce young players. And I think we're going to do that in the future. Now, this one might be a bit of a difficult one, but I always like to ask this question. Where do you see your career going in terms of like, the next five, ten years? Um, obviously, I'd like to play for Scotland. Um, I think team-wise, obviously, most players want to go down and play for England. Uh, play for England, sorry, to play in England. Um, so I think that's the name as well. But I've not. I don't really like looking too far ahead, and I'm I'm enjoying my time at Hibs and whatever opportunities come for me in the future. I'll just see what happens. That's a good. I like that. That's a good answer. I just got. To, I, I like. The <laughs> not Scotland play for man. England though. <laughs> Yeah, no, we'll, we'll leave that bit out. <laughs> but and, um, next question for you is, who do you look up to within the women's game? Is there any sort of like role models you have in terms of female players? Obviously, in the continent, you've got so many great players and there's a lot of these American players and like that that are great. Do you look up to any of them or do you just focus on yourself and everything like that? Um, when I was growing up, I didn't really have anyone I look towards obviously your Kim Littles Erin Cuthbert I used to play with Erin uh, so seeing where she's gone is brilliant um, and Lizzie Arnott I mentioned before before I played for Hibs um, when I played for Fawfer I used to look up to her and how well she played every week um, no I wouldn't say I've got one specific person uh, I look up to a lot of people but yeah I like focusing on myself in my own game as well yeah, that's, I like to hear that that's um, good but you know, women's football across the world in Europe specifically is getting you know stronger and stronger as as time goes by. So it's really great to see. Now, I'll we'll finish up the interview here with one last question, and this is an important one. How do you think Scotland are going to get on at the Euros? What are your predictions there? Well, I'm I'm actually going down to London to watch the Scotland England game, so I'm hoping for a win there. And no, I'm hoping they'll do well. I don't see why they couldn't. Mm. Uh, so. You never know, it's Scotland, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> of course, we've got Hibby, Kevin, Nisbet down there as well, so best yeah. of luck to Kevin um, and the rest of the boys um, as well. So, yeah, well, thank you for joining me, Amy. It's taken a while, but we've got <laughs> you, um, and I really enjoyed this interview. So, thank you to Amy for taking her time out to speak to me. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you to everybody at the club, as per usual, for helping me set this up. The media guys do a fantastic job, and um, thank you to Hibs Women for giving us such a great season and putting in a great entertaining season for us this season. So, yeah, thank you for joining me, Amy. Um, and remember, guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you're new, please subscribe. I'll see you all in a while. Jack out. <laughs>